Welcome to your Everyday Life Podcast with words of encouragement. We hope that you walk away today in your everyday walking around kind of life, feeling energized by the words of encouragement you are about to hear. Each week, the message will inspire you in your plain old ordinary life. Knowing that Jesus is there with you every step of the day and not somewhere far off will give you new perspectives of your daily life. You can find us online at youreverydaylife.org. Go there and subscribe so you can get new weekly devotional blog posts in addition to the many posts on site. So be encouraged in your everyday life. And now, here are your hosts, Scott Ramsey and his wife, Carmen. Hello, everybody, and welcome today to our podcast. We're excited to have you with us, and we have some great guests that we actually we, we kind of had a podcast before we actually started the recording today, right? And we decided John and Cheryl Nins, our guests, welcome guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. us. Yeah, we've decided they're going to become our best friends. So they'll probably be sitting next to us. <laughs> I need a friend. Yeah, yeah. That's so Facebook friends. Uh, and, and we'll come back to how that conversation happened and what that means. But uh, we're excited to have you guys here today, and, and always good to have you stop by as you're in this part of the world we'll get into right with your travels and everything but uh so welcome i'm gonna have carmen do more of a uh, a little more formal interview of you two so everybody will get a good idea of where you're coming from what you're doing and and how this all is going to pan out so this is two of the bright days ahead family uh john and cheryl as we mentioned earlier and they have twins brighton and daisy which if you notice bright days. So part of both of their girls' names are incorporated into um, their name as far as uh, like our handle. Yeah. 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 Their, yeah. yeah. their profile name or their handle. <laughs> so can we start that over? Yeah, no, we're doing good. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so All right. What, we can, can you guys, out, so. um, how, how do people get there? And usually we'll talk about that at the end, but how, how do people see that and get to the story of you guys and follow yeah. you. Yeah, well, we do. You. Yeah, we do have a website which uh-huh. is Bright Days Ahead, but Days is spelled like Carmen was alluding to for, after our daughter Daisy. So it's D A I S. So Bright Days Ahead. Yeah. Dot com is our website, and then okay. we're on YouTube, Instagram, and even TikTok. Yeah. And oh, wow. it's kind of where we share okay. our story and our travels. But if yeah. you want to yeah. kind of. Which we'll Explain, come back to. Introduce yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. People can check that out. So they have all of that. So you can follow their lives as full-time families because they RV together and they travel all around. They have, um, I guess, citizenship here in Florida. So you're here. Yeah. We're three, three months we're, out of the year. We domicile in Florida. They yeah, three, yeah. yeah. Three years. Yeah. And we don't know that term, but that's, so we have that's address, time or term. We have right. an address right. here. Mm-hmm that we've never been to, but it's, for, <laughs> but it's for voting and for taxes and those Is that a physical okay. address or is it, it is. a PO box? It's a physical no, address it's, you have Bushnell, to have a Bushnell physical Florida. address. Okay. So yeah. there's a service that, and if you get into full time or you go on Bright Days Ahead, we can tell you about um, how Absolutely. you get to it and find it. Okay. So is that like the only place you can do that or are there various places? So the group that we work world? with called escapees, you typically pick three states, one of three states. One Where are you guys escapees from? We're escapees from regular life. No. Scared me. Life. Okay, from regular life. We're yeah. living life different. We're li- living life a little different. So you can pick South Dakota. Okay. These are all income tax free states. Okay. South Dakota, Texas, or Florida. Oh, okay. And Florida was best for us because my sister lives here. My parents yes. come down here in the friends, winter. Our best Scott friends, and Scott and Carmen. There Scott Ramsey and his wife Carmen <laughs> are <it>. here. <laughs> so. All right. I'm not sure you were here when we started. When did you move to? No, oh, they were. We, we visited oh, yeah, them you, right you after we got the Pacific. rig. Yeah. We came and visited and we went to that state. I thought that's where you guys came down. Yeah. It was mostly because of It was mostly because of you, yeah. So not only do John and Cheryl travel all over the place, I want to read this. They created the Bright Days Ahead BDA um, to document their adventures across the USA. They share beautiful photos, very informative videos. I've watched it. It is very informative and fun, um, educational, relatable stories, giving helpful advice. And they are full-time RV travelers, content creators, bloggers, and neonatal intensive care unit NICU philanthropists because your daughters were NICU babies. Yeah, Yeah, they were in the NICU for six weeks. So the first six weeks of their life, they were in the hospital and gave us a passion for the 
NICU babies and NICU parents because okay. it's really hard on the parents when their babies yeah, didn't yeah. come home mm-hmm. after they're born. Yeah, yeah. it was, it, there was a day, probably my hardest day in the hospital was when a mom downstairs had twins and her husband was coming out of like the car seats and she was taking her twins oh. home. And it's like, yeah. well, it, it, it was just a very surreal thing when you're in the NICU, like you're in the hospital room, you just gave birth to children and you don't have them in the room with you. You can't like go see them yeah. or then you can go see them. And then when are they coming home and everybody wants to do it. So is it, is their birth even something to celebrate? So just that time in the NICU and then the role of like the dad and what does the dad do during all this? Because the mom is, you know, a little bit more involved, whether it's mm-hmm. the feeding or, you know, just trying to figure out, do I breastfeed? How do you feed your babies? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the role of the dad. And so we saw in the NICU, it, the NICU is non-discriminatory. It doesn't matter what race or socioeconomical background you come from or your mm-hmm. age. So we had people in there, there were 16 to, you know, millionaires to everything in between. Mm-hmm. And it was just a place of like, how we're all struggling with this and then how do we kind of find our role in, in our, you know, our time with our children. Yeah. And then, you know, even thankfully ours came out with a blessing, but like if you lose a child, so that's just kind of a passion mm-hmm. that we've been involved in. And, and part of it is wow. we want to be that mentor for those that are going through it. It's hopefully a temporary thing. Like a lot of people don't spend a ton of time in the NICU, but there are those that, you know, unfortunately celebrate a year in it. And so mm-hmm. with wow. COVID we've, haven't had a lot of traction in like getting to do that, but we'd like mm-hmm. to through our travels, whether it's go talk to NICU organizations or in the hospitals and how we can, you know, just provide that level of support. Because while we were Certainly. in the NICU, there were several families that would come by and uh-huh. just give us a little hope. And that's what we want to give back. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And I hear you say celebrate, but I would think it's a survival. They survived, yeah. you know, the oh, babies yeah. and the parents, just the, I can't even imagine right. and, and for that long. Um, for 20 plus years, John and Cheryl have served as marketing and branding experts for many iconic companies. Uh, before getting on the road, they developed a successful commercial cleaning business, provided over 50 jobs and um, top end franchise profitability. John also serves as a financial coach to help families like uh, live like no one else. <laughs> and BDA has been featured in Rootless Living. I love the name of that. Yeah. Liper, Lipper Scouts, Lippert. Lippert Lippert Scouts. Scouts, and Nomad Families. I did see the, uh, that was awesome. And when, oh, go oh, and RV Today. We were just, oh, oh and nice. uh, that's right. That's what I yeah. saw. RV Today. And then when they're not blogging, John and Cheryl enjoy riding e bikes with their daughters, visiting family and friends, or researching their new adventure. And during their travels, they've been, oh, and we've already touched on that, been inspired to give back to Nick Hugh and just pour into that community while you're on the road. So we're extremely yeah. happy to have both of you because we literally have never had anyone with your type of a lifestyle on here. So I think it's a story that people want to know about. I'm a homeschool teacher as well. Oh, that yes. I did right. add. I did add that to your I, other I like, that. Yes. podcast. Cheryl's the principal. I'm the principal. <laughs> <laughs> so Cheryl does still work outside the RV. Okay. She no, works, actually inside the RV. <laughs> inside the RV. She works remotely. Yes. Remote, so, yeah. yeah. I recently am a remote worker and in back in automotive. So that's kind of been oh, fun to... Okay. Really do, you know, re-sharpen those skills. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you guys are bloggers, bloggers, and do it on a little bit higher level than we do here. But uh, I'm learning. <laughs> Not true. And I'll, I'll need to, you know, I need to pick John's brain more uh, on, on some of this. But uh, you guys have, you guys were part of encouraging me and us along on the um, podcast stuff um, yeah. because I, I was asking those questions with a few close friends saying, you know, where do I go with this? You know, and, and how does that look? And in this everyday thing, not the walk, but I, I was literally sending those out daily yeah, and your emails uh, were very working good. full time with my coaching with office pride and just everything well, going like- on. Right. And it was, it was kind of wearing me out. It was great for me growth wise, but then I picked some people's brain, you know, you get wisdom, that knowledge and experience from other people. And I think it was specifically you, John, that said, what if you cut it back a little bit on the blogging and looked at the the podcast stuff and kind of do a combo maybe once a week? And I, I felt a sense of relief, like, yeah, I could start doing that once a week instead of every day. <laughs> and I think it's, so, it's been, yeah. I think, more impactful for me yeah. because 
the once a week thing, I know it's going to hit me hard. And when I get that on Monday mornings from you, it's wonderful. Yeah. I, I got to admit, sometimes a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, I would miss it. Yeah. Life just yeah. gets in the way. So Certainly. it's. I think it's been good. And I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad we could help. So we're still learning grow, but it's, it's, it's um, exciting to know that you guys are out there having an impact through what you're doing. Yeah. And I, I think we all feel like, oh gosh, just, you know, you look at some, some of these uh, podcasters and bloggers and they have hundreds of thousands of people and stuff. We're like, oh, what kind of an impact are we having? But, you know, even if it's a person here and there that gets something out of what we're doing, um, yeah, that's kind yeah. of exciting. And that's why I talk to, I mean, we struggle with that too. Like, do we have enough followers or likes? And yeah. sometimes I tell John, like, you know, it's that one person, whether we meet him in the campground or something and, and you don't even know you have an effect on them, but they'll come back and say like, you know, when you told me this, that was a really big deal. And I said, yeah. we're not trying to do this for the masses. We're just trying to help that one person. And we may or may not know who that is, you yeah, know? Yeah. 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 I love that. And you know what is fun for us in watching people that we know do that kind of stuff? We know you guys. And so it's like, look at these guys go. This is exciting. But somebody else from the outside, I think, look at it like, oh, look at them. They're not very professional. Look at, you know, compared to them, who yeah. are these guys? Yeah. But that's what I love about the story and the background that has led to that point <laughs> is that you guys are not going to He's me to jump in. And I said, I feel yeah. like I'm interrupting. I've tried to jump in three times now. I thought you were taking the lead. <laughs> Let me talk. No, but you talked about it picking John's brain. And I feel like John is, you know, research and development, R and D is more behind the but you are in front of the camera. But I feel like personality wise and stuff, it's you both work together really great. But I mean, I have I mean, the personality of Cheryl on camera and on the site and everything and the way you and She's definitely talent. Beauty <laughs> <laughs> and talent. And yeah. Then there's, well, there's I all. just you know, but you guys work great together we that way we do yeah. you know and sometimes i would struggle with like coming up with content and I'm like i don't mind doing it i just needed a lot of help with it and so he's really jumped in with whether it's the filming or the ideas or yeah. you know the big picture of bringing it all together yeah. mm -hmm. and so it's been fun we you know we work together a little bit at ford we we had kind of different career paths but then yeah. working together at office pride I think really yeah. like prepared us for a lot of things because we worked together building a business, you yeah. guys know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, so when we went on the road in 400 square feet, we were already in a sense prepared because we'd been working every day together mm -hmm. with the office probably mm -hmm. for a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. Yeah. So let me bring this around to um, your walk with, with Christ. Yeah. So, you know, that's, I think what, I like learning from other people and hopefully other people are watching this to find out what, what does that look like for them and how does that apply to me? And so you, know, you guys are, you know, working for some, you know, fortune 500 companies traveling the world, doing all these different things. You're, you're at a unique place. We were talking about that beforehand, right? Where you, John, you're my age and you have twins that are five, right? Yeah. As I told you, I'll be 72 when they graduate high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so you're friends with people that are 30 mm -hmm. <laughs> who have kids your age, but, right. and that's why you connect with them. And I think, you know, sometimes we can cross those boundaries, right? Uh, but it puts us in unique There's situations. And so, yeah. and, and then on top of that, just even without that challenge, you have you're traveling. I mean, you're full time RVers. Is that what it's called? Yeah, what, what, yeah. yeah full time. Yeah. yeah, full time RV family. Yeah. So that's unique in itself. Yeah. Um, so how does how does that walk look? Um, I'll go first. I I I don't know anything else but walking with the Lord because I I accepted Christ when I was seven years old. Okay. In a Christian home. Sometimes I feel bad that I wasn't like a drug addict and, got, and it got, <laughs> got saved when I was 22 years old. It was amazing. I don't have that story because I've always been in a Christian home. I don't know any different. And sometimes I think it's, it's sometimes it's a blessing and sometimes it's a curse because mm. I don't really understand people yeah. who are not walking with, 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 <clears throat> with Christ. So, but what's, what's happening now is that I shared this before the podcast is that we don't have that sense of community that a church gives you. Mm -hmm. So when you go to church and sometimes you've had a rough week and you see a few friends and it's the right message and some people from your small group are there to support you. 
we don't have that because I've been, when we travel, I watch church on YouTube yeah, and it's just not the yeah. same. Mm -hmm. You don't get that connection, that same connection with people. And a lot of people say, pastors have said this my whole life. The church isn't this building. The church right, is right. the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have the building or the people. Yeah. So we're struggling with that a bit. And when we stay in the Florida area for the winter, we do go to a church. But I feel like much with a lot of the snowbird people there, they're going to leave. And I think <laughs> the church is all, always looking at you like, are you permanent or are you leaving? <laughs> and then they treat you a little bit different. So... Uh, the travel has been great for our family and for everything else, but we are. If there's a negative aspect to being full time RVers, it's you don't have that church or that sense of community that the church provides you yeah. when you live in what we call bricks and sticks. Right. So, gotcha. And we, we have um, gotten involved a lot with like a couple organizations or a full time family um, RVers. And then it's just finding them. And so there's even, there's even some Christian ones and they mm -hmm. either do a mission trip or something, but it's all this dichotomy of like, okay, well, if, do we want to do that and go with them and travel with them, you know, up this route when yeah, we yeah. still sort of have an agenda, like yeah. how long are we going to be traveling? We want to see, you know, this national park, this national park, we need to hit all these states. And so that's kind of been where we struggle. There's definitely communities that you can find and plug into, but then do they line up with like some of your priorities for your family right now? Plus, most of them are vegans, and I really love hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, guy. That is true. But, but we have we have barbecue afterwards. Yeah, yeah, but we have found a couple families that we've traveled with or been with, and you know, some of them are Christians, and some of them don't, you know, have a walk, and then. You know what is our job as Christians? It is, um, mm -hmm. it is to bring them upside of the Lord. But both of us are not like Bible thumpers, so that's kind of been like a little bit of a struggle, like just in our walk. And then you know, do we leave it open to talk about it? Like we had a lot of family meals together, and so we made a point that while we're all here, I don't know, fifteen of us or something, mm -hmm. let's make sure that we always say a prayer. And yeah, you know, yeah. and their kids would talk a little bit about that, like, oh, why do we say a prayer beforehand? And yeah. So I think we're a little bit more softer yeah, in yeah, our testimony. We are. And testimony. Like my, yeah. Yeah. my way okay. of leading people to Christ has always been lead by example. Right. So well, if they look at your life and say, wow, I want to live like them, but we only know them for two days mm -hmm. because then we all move out of our campground again. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been yeah. difficult for me to say lead by example when they only see me for two nights mm -hmm. at a Still, campfire. You never know. Still, but yeah. you don't know. So we have some new yeah. friends that we went out to dinner with the other night yeah. and he had a shirt on of a quote that I That's really cool. love from uh Saint Francis Saint um Francis of Assisi. Francis of Sisi. Yeah. yeah. I remember watch that. Anyway, mm -hmm. so and the quote is uh share the gospel always use words when necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and so yeah. I love that because yeah. that's that's what you're talking about. That's right. what you're right. doing. Another yeah. Another quote I think of, oh, I was thinking when two or more are gathered in his name, because you talked about yes. church mm -hmm. and the people that you're with. And I don't think that you have to be a Bible thumper. Mm -hmm. I think that God gives you what you need for the, the people that are in front of you, who he puts in front of you. So I have a question in yeah. that, um, do you guys ever just connect with some people, whether it be, you know, a couple or something and maybe do like a little church thing yourself within some of your RV communities, or have you sought out and decided like on a whim to try a church, just different areas, you know, when you're out and about, and then how yeah. does that come about or that prompting? Yeah, we, we have tried a couple churches and it takes yeah. a lot of like, okay, research. Now think about, it. I've researched the town, I've researched the campground and then, okay, Sunday's coming up. Like, what church do we go to? And we've done that several times. We mm -hmm. like that. Um, but we have gotten together with a couple of communities and then we've had like campfires and stuff, but I don't think we've like set out and said like, let's have a worship. I know there's been it's some. It's starting to come back in the campgrounds. They typically have a Sunday service. Yeah. And we've I done that. They did. We did that in Alabama. We did that. Yeah. Um, but because COVID, they'd canceled a lot of those things. So or even kind like of getting this together. Of COVID so, and being on the road yeah. has been yeah. kind of interesting, but. Uh, those things are starting to come back in now that COVID's uh, on, on the downside. So uh, we're looking forward to that. But I think you're right. We have conversations like this around the campfire with people. And we've done that a lot. And, and I think yeah. it's just the fact that 
and I'm going to say this and I don't mean it negatively, that we're not drinking beers and doing yeah. the typical campground thing. Mm -hmm. I think they look at us differently. Like, why aren't you, what's wrong with you? Why don't you have a case of beer over here like the rest of the campers do? And yeah. I think and just a little bit of our lifestyle, I think we can lead by example. And right. so we try that. But yeah. um, I would love to sit by the campfire like we did when I was a kid and yeah. sing Kumbaya and somebody has the guitar. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened. So hopefully someday it does because I'll be sure. Across someone who play, has an acoustic guitar, yeah. that would be awesome. It's yeah. so forty years ago. Too. I know, I know. <laughs> well, and and I will say there is like right now, especially if they're watching, there are some families that do do worship like in a couple mm -hmm. of campgrounds that we're at mm -hmm. like right now in the Orlando area. But then we get into a thing where like our kids go to bed kind of early, so they mm -hmm. fall asleep at seven thirty, and so mm -hmm. some of these worships are starting at seven seven thirty. So then you get into like, well, babysitters, we don't want to get a babysitter or something. We don't want to stay. So but, we've, we've done yeah, a lot of yeah. campfire and bike stuff. inspired stoppers. me to do But yeah, more. definitely. I think, there is, I think there is. There are things there's you can do. There's some room there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, yeah. To, to so yeah. what about, because you guys are in a unique mm -hmm. situation. I mean, not only are you full-time RVers, you're full-time family on the road, mm -hmm. but then you add COVID to that. And the whole challenge of that, I mean, I remember, and, and I think we get, even without, like Carmen and I, we're not full-time RV. We don't even have an RV. And we'll right. travel with you guys if you want us to sometime. But anyway, we we are in a, in a situation where I think other people got caught up in this too, that we got so comfortable turning the TV on and watching the service because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Church that your when church, yeah, yeah. and just the story he, John had. Uh, he but, calls it bad Baptist, wait, uh, Box, Spring Box Spring Baptist Church. Box Spring Baptist Church. You can okay. watch TV, watch church in your in your bed. Box Spring Baptist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we got so comfortable with that that even when the church, you know, started coming back together again uh, for regular services, you know, I think a lot of them aren't up to full capacity yet where they were before that because mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute, I got comfortable watching it from right here at, at right. home, and it, and I I got caught up in that. I remember you talking about John, and I just thought this was a fun story. You, I, you were with family. I can't remember if it was Cheryl's family. Oh, or, Cheryl's family. And yeah, and it was a Sunday God morning, and we were oh, like, okay, we're all going to watch, you know, the service, you know, together during the high COVID, and so you guys kind of came out in your PJs, your comfortable clothes, yes, right? And they're yes. all dressed up like, and they had dressed up for church, <laughs> and they were, and it was just. A little bit awkward because they were singing worship songs. Just like if they're looking like they were in church, church. They were in church but we're like, not in church. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with it. And absolutely like, not. Yeah, yeah, it was but, it was eye opening to yeah. us. Like they, you know, they still kept up that yeah. practice of getting dressed and mm -hmm. you know making yeah. time for the yeah. Lord and yeah. worshiping, and uh, it was it was very eye opening. Yeah. And then she served us pancakes, so that was nice. Yeah. But, yeah. Pancakes at church. Well, yeah. for, for those, but I think not just yeah. church. I think COVID has made us lazy as a culture, a generation mm -hmm. to connect mm -hmm. and make friendships, yeah. Yeah. or even just be in the room and smile. You know, walk into a store and smile because we're behind masks, or you know, go out of your way. Okay, so now we're wearing masks. You can still say hello. Yeah. You can still say like, yeah. "Hi, how are you?" Or and yeah. I just think like that, mm -hmm. and we don't talk a lot, a lot about it in society, but. It has completely changed our culture and how we are to each other and being friendships and friendly. And, and then it just carries on over into the church. You know, I heard a, oh, sorry. I heard a story one time, um, you know, they said when you smile at someone, you know, you might be the only, you know, smile you that they see all day. And then the mask has taken that away. Oh, and yeah. they have, you've noticed as you've gone along that, you know, people don't make as much eye contact or it's almost like because I'm behind this mask and you don't really, I mean, you, I don't think people really realize the impact a smile had until you, it was taken away. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think that's where we just really worked hard in like campgrounds, maybe not as strong as we should be in our faith, but like just trying to connect and, yeah. you know, make yeah. friends or, Hey, you have kids the same age as our kids Let's play together. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what he yeah. calls us to. Again, yeah. that's yeah. still community. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Community. yeah. So, COVID's going on, full-time RVers, mm -hmm. even without COVID, what, is there those RVers that would connect virtually? Like, hey, on Tuesday nights, no matter where you are in the country, you're going to be a part of our little group where we connect virtually 
through Zoom, whatever it might be, and actually have our own little small group together. Did they do anything like that? Or uh, not, not that I've experienced. Um, no, unless you know something full-time families have put together. There's a group called Full-Time Families. Yeah, I think, it's, it's I think within so within there, they do groups, have... but not necessarily faith-based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there's yeah, yeah. yeah there's okay. some okay. virtual campfires yeah. and it's an opportunity like that. for sure. Mm -hmm. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, you guys have convoyed, so you've developed relationships with other full-time mm -hmm. yes timers. So mm -hmm. how did all of that come about? So I think that's kind of cool. And again, because I follow Bright Days Ahead on Instagram and now TikTok and YouTube, but I think what's that look like? I think it's the same way that you meet. Any friends. We have mm -hmm. things in common, mostly children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we, we all RV. Mm -hmm. We're traveling mm -hmm. full time. And then I think it's faith or values are the same yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, we, we tend not to hang out with the people who are partiers. Yeah. Because it's just not us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the folks that we get connected with uh, have very similar values, very similar age children. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for the most part, they all have, they are believers as well. Because yeah. you find that out after a couple of times with them, yeah. that they're believers as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. most everybody has an Instagram page, so you kind of know about them anyway. Yeah. Because they'll usually their profile, Christ follower, mm -hmm. which which always helps to know that beforehand. And before you get <laughs> so and, social media helps. Yeah. And we've found that like in the convoy, I mean, there's some struggles inside the convoy. Like, okay, how do you, do we travel the same way? Or, you know, yeah. even that day of like, okay, we are like a, get up, get packed, get moved yeah. and some linger, but you know, so there's some struggles with traveling in a convoy, but then there's also a lot of advantages, like just the old fashioned, like neighbor, can I borrow a cup of sugar yeah. or can you watch my kids while I go do, you know, laundry or whatever. Yeah. So we've enjoyed some of that. Yeah. And we stay in contact with them. Yeah. What's been your biggest convoy, the biggest group of people traveling just, to one place? It's just two, four, two four three, groups. yeah, three groups. Four yeah. Of us. So yeah. basically it's like a, a friendcation. Just yes. you take your homes with you and you just right. plan, hey, we're yeah. going here and we're getting, awesome. you don't really travel together. Drive together is difficult. We all yeah. meet at the, the same place. Okay, because okay. right. we like to leave at eight, 8 a.m. Some of them <laughs> eight or nine, eight, and ten or eleven, 10 or 11 or twelve, so. and yeah. some like to stop for lunch and we eat while we're rolling down the road. So it's you have yeah. different ways of traveling. So if you all meet at the final destination, it yeah, is, that it's makes best. Sense. Yeah. But we've seen them in Michigan and Alabama and Florida, and then we have a couple of like places. Like we haven't done the full like let's travel like all six months together, right. but we're gonna meet him in a couple places. But we are talking about like Alaska is Alaska a big caravan. deal, like Alaska oh, caravan, and there you would travel together, and there's safety in numbers, and just things break. So that's yeah. something we're looking at. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, how many states have you been in so far? Since thirty nine. I think thirty nine. Thirty eight or thirty nine. Yes. Thirty nine. My big question is, will you ever make it to Hawaii? Uh, no. <laughs> Well, there too, they have barges, right? A lot of people yeah. do that. <laughs> they fly there and they rent, rent a, like a van, a oh, van life. They do oh, van hey. life on Oahu, okay. and then they count that state because we don't count a <laughs> state until we stay overnight there. So, like okay. Kansas is not on our list, no, which everybody's like. But you started from there. And we like, launched we from Kansas, ever, but we didn't stay all night there. Yeah, so. we never stayed <laughs> in the RV. So this, there's all kinds of rules. <laughs> and this season, we leave Florida uh, around April first, and we're heading to Maine this oh, year. Nice. We're on the East Coast. Uh, very slowly make our way to Maine uh, for the leaves in September. Okay, yeah, and then, absolutely. Then we'll, all the East come back to, yeah. then we'll come back to Florida for the winter next year yeah. as well. Okay, okay. So, so we'll have a hole in our map. It's just like the very center, like we're missing Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. Oklahoma. We okay. missed those three states. Okay, mm -hmm. but we'll make it. We'll try to get back there. Yeah. So, wondering if we could sum this up by you sharing with us. Just in a couple of words, what are your greatest challenges in your everyday walk as a full-time RVer? Hmm. Well, I think we um, we started this because we wanted to make time with our kids. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like, I mean, we both kind of felt like we were on borrowed time. Like John's already talked, he's going to be 72 and the kids graduate from high school, but I also, I didn't become a mother until almost 40 or even was married until like my late 30s. So I feel like I'm on borrowed time with him. I'm on borrowed time with the kids. So we did this a little bit to escape keeping up with the Joneses okay. and then making time with our kids. And I feel like we get a lot of quality time and we are really enjoying the time with our kids. But then 
the keeping up with the Joneses or the stuff, whether it's in the RV or like now it's like, okay, we live in 400 square feet and we go visit someone in a house where I was like, oh, it'd be nice to be back in a house, <laughs> you know? So I think keeping, keeping your goal in mind and not trying to compare yourself to others. And that's not just a struggle because we're an RV or I think yeah, it's a struggle okay. for anyone. So, and so, you know, we just like to kind of go back to like what our goal is, is like bright yeah. days ahead is not just a clever name. It's like, Really, whether we're in, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> but yeah, more it's, it. it's more of like our mantra, whether you're in good days or bad days, you have to remember that there's always bright days ahead. And I think yeah. it kind of goes back to Jeremiah 29 and 11 yeah. for, you know, I, I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord, you know, to you know prosper with you and not to harm you mm -hmm. and to give you, you know, hope and a future. Wow. And that's what we're really trying to do here yeah. at Bright Days Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was good, babe. It was. That, that <laughs> just wrapped up the yeah. show. So I, 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 now that I think a lot of people attribute this quote to St. Francis of CC, but um, I think it's actually unknown when I researched a little bit, but where um, he, you know, he was on his deathbed and he says, you know, I went out to change the world and then I realized couldn't change the world. So I thought, well, if I can just change my country. And then the story goes on to the point where finally he says, you know, here I lie on my deathbed and realize if I would have just started with my family mm -hmm. and put that time into my family, then my family could have then had an impact on our town. And then the town could have had a the yeah. reverse of that, right? Yeah. So that's what I hear you saying. Yeah, yeah. It's, we're, and it's not, it is just our daughters, but it's not even just that. Like we're really trying to make more time with our extended family, like seeing his parents, trying to see, spend more time with my parents. We've spent a couple of weeks with them, mm -hmm. our daughters, or even the relationships John likes to call my random friends. I don't like to say <laughs> random friends, but did, would they I fall into this? Are we yeah. random friends? So we went from yeah. best friends to random friends. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> she has not this friends random family because they're friends that <laughs> she says that are her cousins. So when or, we see them, I'm always like, are they a real cousin up. or are they a random friend? <laughs> but it's making those connections. Like, yeah, do we certainly. do we always get so to... So we bring our house along with us and we, yeah, we don't we have to stay to... with my parents at their house. We don't have to stay with my Or we daughters. don't have to stay with you. Because we, we have our own right. house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like we've stayed at her mom's house. Her mom was bringing out coffee in the morning because we we're parked in their driveway. And I'm like... God love you, Pam, but we already have a coffee maker here. She's like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she had that right heart. Yeah. Like like, oh, yeah, you guys have heart. everything. Yeah. When Dean and Nancy RV here, and because we don't live here, we're just working here. Yeah. And they're in their RV. And she's like, do you have this? Do you have a spatula? Do you me? have that? Yeah. We borrowed so much stuff from her home and her and Dean's home. It was, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. Yeah. That is a home. Yeah. And I think yes. sometimes like people forget like, yeah, we do travel and we get to see like our backyard changes, but like, when are you going to stop? I'm like, this is our house. Well, Cheryl yeah. has, yeah. has yeah. to travel in a few weeks to go to Las Vegas for work. And just getting a suitcase out, it's kind of weird because we always have a lot of stuff with us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bring it along the back of the truck. And, uh, yeah, like, can you can you just follow me to Las Vegas so I don't have to pack <laughs> this? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, totally. yeah. Yeah, yeah so, get up and go. so Cheryl, great closing thoughts. And you. just, you know, the focus on your family, your extended mm -hmm. family, those you're close to and really investing in, in that. That's awesome because that's, that's where we are in our walk with Christ or should be. Um, John, any closing thoughts for you? My closing thoughts is, um, like I said earlier, I miss the church. Yeah, I miss my church. Yeah. But I'm meeting people along the way that that I can share what little time I have with them. Yeah. I can yeah. somehow lead as an example. But for me, this is all about spending time with my kids. Because like I told you before the podcast, yeah, I think our kids only want one thing from us. Because they'll forget about the bicycles and the stuff we buy them. But if we give them time, which is what they want, is time. And I'm, I'm, I thank God every day that He's given me this opportunity yeah. to not have to work mm -hmm. and spend time with my children. Yeah. And um, we're really trying to do experience over things. Yeah. Yeah. So is it okay if I share that? You know, you have two daughters that are they're 25 and 22, 29, 29 and 25. And 25. Uh, yeah. So okay. Alyssa, <laughs> Alyssa and Caroline, okay. uh, 25 so, and 29. But at that time, and, and, you know, as they were growing up, you were traveling the world, uh, you know, with this. I traveled a lot. I traveled a lot. Yeah. And then um, 
it's this whole different subject. Yeah. But because of my work, I remember my their mother told me that I had a mistress, and I'm like, "What? Your mistress is your work. Yeah. You spend more time with her than you do your family." Yeah. And I, I still feel guilt today because of the divorce, but I ask God every day to forgive me and forgive that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. But it worked out for the best because because of the divorce, I spent more time with my children. I stopped working as much and we spent more time together and I still got promoted and I still got bonuses <clears throat> and all those things yeah. still happened. Wow. And they were six and 10 at the time. And today we still talk on the phone every day. Yeah. They're yeah. very close. Yeah. Like they was, talk all the time. Yeah, it was awesome. eye opening to me. It's a whole different podcast, but yeah. because of that, I still feel guilt yeah. that I work too much. And yeah. now God's given me another chance. I'm kind of this do again, dad. And I'm spending, except for right now, they're not here. They're with my parents. <laughs> but I, spend, I spend 24 seven with those two little girls. Yeah. And it's, it's the biggest, biggest blessing that, wow. that, that I've been given in my entire life. So that's amazing. And yeah, I didn't realize we had that in common. My, you know, and I won't make this long, but my mentor, um, I, I think you guys have met him at least seen them on a podcast with us. And, and I mentioned him a lot, uh, Keith and Bridget, they're our mentors, great couple. But I remember earlier in my life, uh, Keith said to me, uh, that my ministry was my mistress. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, it, you know, I just couldn't comprehend that at the moment, but it, mm-hmm. at, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, similar. I didn't realize we had that. You didn't mention we've known each other since fourth grade or third grade or whatever it was. We played, we were in elementary school together. A little bitty ball, basketball, the boys club we played together. And here we we are now, almost 40 years old, still seeing. We we had the the brown baseball bat in the little league in in, in common. Yeah. We like to use. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and then you guys brought us into Office Pride, and we've both have since sold those businesses. Yeah. We learned a lot from each other. and. Certainly, yeah. certainly. Carmen, closing thoughts? We're closing it down. I just love how you guys are simplifying your life and you're keeping, you're being intentional and keeping things in mm-hmm. check. Um, what you just said a second ago touched my heart because I have, as a parent, my own struggles with re- with guilt and regret. And I think that's really a whole other podcast mm-hmm. in and of itself. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I wish I could get a do-over too. But um, just in, we can loan you ours. But, um, yeah, so just the simplifying and that you guys are finding community mm-hmm. and you're using the platforms that you have available to you. And it's exciting, like to watch you guys grow through that process and how that's all developing. And I definitely would give them a follow on. I'm not saying that just because I'm a friend, I'm a fan too. So I love Thank their you. content. I love, the stuff that they share. And I love your family, Brighton yeah. and Daisy. They're so cute. Oh yeah. my gosh. So anyway, just um, what a blessing that you guys have the opportunity that you can do that and you can live life Different. differently, you know, yeah. just yeah. something out of the ordinary, really yeah. extraordinary. So, yeah. So John, Cheryl, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to Thank be with you. us today. And you can all go to brightdaysahead.com. Yeah. D-A-I-S. Yes, and and follow these guys, check them out, see their story. But even though they have a unique situation, uh, a lot of challenges along the way, like all of us had with COVID, but even being our full-time RVers, full-time RV family, um, this is this is what you see, and I hope you got a takeaway from that in their everyday walk with the Lord. It looks different than us. What are we, stay-at-home full-timers? Sticks and bricks. You're You're sticks and bricks. (laughs) We're sticks and bricks. Sticks and bricks, yeah. Yeah. Uh, But that walk is still there, and it just looks different. And so I hope you've got something from that. Thanks for being with us, and we want to challenge you in your everyday walk with the Lord. God bless you. That's good. So take. Thank you for joining us this week on Your Everyday Life Podcast. We pray that you were encouraged. Make sure to visit our website at youreverydaylife.org where you can subscribe and receive weekly devotional blogs from Scott. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Your Everyday Life. Be sure to give us a comment on how words of encouragement has inspired you and pass the word on to a friend who you know needs encouragement. 
Be sure to tune in again next week when once again we will look at everyday life topics and apply words of encouragement. Until then, stay encouraged by what you heard today and may you be greatly blessed.